Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm talking about the Pythagorean Theorem of Sports. If you're interested in sports analytics, I think that this is one of the most foundational concepts and most important concepts that you can learn today. When I say the Pythagorean Theorem, we're not talking about calculating the hypotenuse of a triangle. We're actually using this equation to evaluate the expected win probability of a sports team. Now this concept was founded in baseball, but it can be extrapolated to basketball and football as well. The Pythagorean theorem of baseball, of football, of basketball, allows us to one, project the win probability or the number of wins that a team might have in the upcoming year. And it also lets us evaluate how an individual player can contribute to that win total. If you want to learn more about this concept, I recommend reading Mathletics by Wayne Winston, as well as Trading Bases by Joe Pita. These books are excellent, they're, they're very good stories, and they go well beyond just this simple concept. As usual, if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see content similar to this, please subscribe. Also, you're welcome to share these videos if you think anyone else would find them interesting and exciting. The Pythagorean Theorem of Baseball was created by Bill James. He found that a function of the number of runs a team scored and the number of runs that were scored against that team was a good indicator of the number of games that they would win each year. This is the formula right here. So run scored squared divided by run scored squared plus runs against squared equals the approximate win percentage of that team. They call this the Pythagorean theorem because it bears striking resemblance to the formula. Let's do a quick example of this. So let's take the Astros from this past season here. So they scored, I believe, uh, 920 runs and they had 640 runs scored against them. So if we look at this formula, we can see that the projected win probability is 0.674. Their actual win probability, or the, the percent of games that they won, was 0.66. So our projection is that they will win 109 games, and they actually won 107 games. That is really good. That's a great estimation of the actual win total. This shouldn't be overwhelmingly surprising because runs and runs against are components of what actually makes you win, but this theorem allows us to really extrapolate and to see what other factors underlying runs and runs against contribute to this winning percentage. It also lets us project this into the future. This formula is useful to sports bettors or anyone interested in sports analytics in a couple different ways. So the first is if we're looking at the progress of a season so far, trying to determine if teams will actually play better or play worse in the remaining games. So we use this formula to evaluate how many games that they should have won versus how many games that they've actually won. So if we get through the Pythagorean theorem of baseball that they've won significantly less games than they have actually won, we would expect that their performance might regress to the mean over the course of the season. If we're looking to project the number of wins or the win probability of a team next year, what we'd have to do is project how many points we'd expect them to, uh, how many runs we'd expect them to score, and how many runs we'd expect scored against them. We can use a couple different uh, calculations, a couple different regression formulas, but that concept is for another video. What is very cool about this is you can also understand through this formula how a individual player contributes to the team. So if we can expect a player to contribute a significant amount uh, more runs and potentially through the defensive end decrease the number of runs scored against, we can pinpoint almost exactly how many games or how many wins that player would contribute to. We can see how a trade for a new player with the number of runs that they create versus a old player on the team we could see how that trade-off would actually impact the team, which is very cool and very useful to organizations. While I mostly talked about baseball, this formula to a certain extent holds true for football and basketball as well. Now because they play less games in basketball and football, the formula is slightly less accurate in both of these two fields. Now 
One thing that we have to pay attention to is that the way that points scored and the volume of points being scored is a lot higher across these two sports. So you have to adjust the exp exponent slightly. So in Winston's book, Mathletics, he suggests that the optimal exponent for football is raising the run scored and runs against to the 2.37th power. And for basketball, because they score significantly more points, you would raise that exponent to the 15.4th power. With basketball, as well as with football, there are a lot more dependencies between events. So in baseball, each at bat is somewhat isolated, whereas in football and basketball, there are a lot of moving parts on the field. That makes this a bit more challenging to use to isolate individual player effects, but it is still a foundational piece that a lot of basketball and football analytics are built off of. I hope that you found this video informative and I hope that you apply it in some ways when you're actually analyzing sports. As usual, please leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions or you have any concerns about this video and good luck on your sports analytics and data science journey.